Welcome. My name is Sujatha Joshi. I work at the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center, helping Northwest tribes get access to accurate public health data on their communities. This short video on presenting health data is part of a series of videos designed to help you obtain and use health data. To see the rest of the videos in this series, click on the link below. Okay, let's begin. The ability to clearly communicate about health data is a valuable skill. Why? If we can explain health data simply, we can help our community members and our leadership understand health trends, determine the usefulness of our health policies, and see the impacts of our health programs. There are many effective ways to present health data. In this video, we will discuss five different options for visually presenting data that are commonly used, how to select the best visual option that fits your goals, and people and organizations to reach out to for help when you need it. Two quick notes before we get started. First, let's talk about audience. When you are planning to present health data, it is helpful to first think of your audience and what will resonate best with them. Many people understand graphic or visual data better than tables of numbers and plain text, although these can sometimes be appropriate too. When presenting data, keep in mind that often a good representative picture or image is better than a thousand words. Here is an image from an indigenous artist who beaded this piece to represent the warming of the Arctic Ocean. The colors represent the changes in temperature over the past 50 years. Also, when you are developing your presentation, aim to keep your explanation simple. Consider focusing on only a few key take-home messages that you want to communicate. If possible, only use data that highlights these key take-home messages and share visuals to explain these highlights. Here's an insider tip. Sometimes presenters get overwhelmed when they have a lot of data and their instinct is to do a data dump, where they show their audience lots of data without focusing on key take-home messages. Fight the impulse to do a data dump, because this can confuse and overwhelm your audience. Your audience shouldn't have to sift through your data. In addition to focusing on a few key take-home messages and using graphics, Using plain language can help you keep your explanation simple. When you are presenting data, try to use plain language and avoid confusing terms or jargon. Focus on using everyday language. Give clear examples. Use visuals whenever possible. And avoid using too much text. There are many ways to present data visually. I will talk through the pros and cons of five different approaches, including pie charts, column charts, also called bar graphs, line charts, maps, and infographics. Okay, let's start with pie charts. A pie chart is a circular chart divided into sections. The full circle represents 100% of the data. Each slice of the pie represents part of the data. For example, this pie chart represents the age of the people in my town. As you can see, 30% of the people in my town are adults, 40% are children, 15% are young adults, and 15% are seniors. 30% plus 40% plus 15% plus 15% equals 100% or all of the people in my town. Pie charts can be useful when you only have a few categories, about four or less. The pie chart on the last slide had only four categories, children, young adults, adults, and seniors. Any more than that and things can start to get confusing because it can be difficult to compare the sizes of different slices. Just like it can be difficult to compare apples to oranges, they are too different, it can be difficult or inappropriate to compare data from different pie charts. For example, look at the pie charts on this slide. The pie chart on the left represents the age of females in my town, and the pie chart on the right represents the age of males in my town. Many people would look at these two pie charts and make the mistake of thinking that in my town, there are more adult women than adult men. Many people would also look at the chart on the right and think that there are as many senior men as young adult men. However, both are not true. These graphs illustrate two of the big problems with using pie charts. First, when we see these two pie charts next to each other, we are often tempted to compare the size of slices between groups. Doing this may lead us to believe that there are more adult women than men. But what if there are fewer women overall than men in my town? The yellow-brown slice that represents female adults on the left, although it appears bigger, 
might represent fewer individuals than the yellow-brown slice that represents male adults on the right. Pie chart slices show how each category of information relates to the whole, but what if each pie differs in its size? And it doesn't make sense to compare slices between groups. You can visualize it like this. Having half of a very small pie is far different than having half of a very large pie. With data, it works the same. Another problem with using pie charts is being able to see which slices are larger than others. In this example, it seems like there are as many male seniors, young adults, and children. But based on just the size of slices alone, would you feel confident saying which group was larger? I don't think that I would. Pie charts have their uses, but they can very easily mislead your audience. Your data is important, and you want your charts to highlight your message, not leave your audience confused. So if you shouldn't compare a pie to a pie, or if it's challenging to compare slices in an individual pie, what might be a better graphic tool to use? Here is the same data comparing the ages of the men and women in my town presented in a column chart, also called a bar graph. Even without any data labels, it is clear that there are fewer adult women in my town than adult men. Thus, you can feel more confident telling people which age group of men was larger in my town. Column charts are useful in that they allow you to easily compare groups of data like we just did in the last example. They also allow you to show confidence interval bars. For a refresher on confidence intervals, check out this short video. Column charts also allow you to group information differently based on the story you want to tell. They also allow you to decide how you want to make comparisons. To keep your column charts simple, it's best to use them when you have one to four groups to compare. Anything more can get confusing. Also, and this is true for presenting any health data, make sure your visuals are as simple as possible. That means if a visual element doesn't help you communicate one of your key messages, remove it. That means removing any unnecessary images, labels, logos, borders, grid lines, backgrounds, and anything else that can add visual clutter and distract your audience. Everyone has different comfort levels when it comes to interpreting graphs and other data visuals. Make it easy for your audience to understand the story you are telling by turning down the visual noise. Keep in mind that column charts don't work well in certain situations. For example, they have less impact if values are very similar to each other. They also don't work well if one of the values you are showing is zero. Another way to present data visually is by using line charts. Line charts are usually used to show how a measure has changed over time. For example, this line chart shows the change in average A1C levels for patients with diabetes who participated in a community gardening program focused on healthy eating. As you can see over this time period, patients with diabetes who participated in the program saw their A1C levels decrease. This is great because we know A1C is a measure of average blood sugar levels over a three month period, a key indicator to measure for people living with diabetes. You can also use line charts to compare trends between two different groups. In the example below, we compared the change in average A1C levels for diabetes patients who participated in a community gardening program versus diabetes patients who did not participate in the program. As you can see over five years, diabetes patients who participated in the program saw their A1C levels decrease, whereas patients who did not participate in the program had A1C levels that held relatively constant. As with column charts, it's best to use line charts when you are comparing one to four groups. Also, as with column charts, with line charts, you can show confidence intervals. Again, for a refresher on confidence intervals, check out this short video. Another tip, the colored lines on line charts can be hard to read for some people. In this example, the colors used to represent participants and non-participants are too similar. They are also too light. Consider using colors that are different enough from one another, and no light or pastel colors, please, as they can be hard to read. Also, if your line chart or other visual display of data 
might get printed off in black and white, consider how to best display your data. For line charts, using different line styles can help maintain clarity. For column charts, consider using black and white patterns or different shades of gray to show differences rather than using solid colors. For pie charts, you should also consider using black and white patterns to show differences or different shades of gray rather than using solid colors. Keep in mind that there are times when line charts are not the best choice for displaying your data in a meaningful way. This can happen when the change over time is small. In this case, the line won't show any changes that are obvious to your audience. Also, line charts are generally not useful if the groups you are comparing had different starting points. Maps are a useful way to display data that varies across a geographic area. For example, if you want to draw attention to an area that is experiencing a health disparity or a health victory. Because they are visual, maps are very appealing and can convey a lot of information quickly. However, it's important to put thought into what you are mapping so your audience doesn't draw any false conclusions. A common error when mapping is to show counts, for example, the number of people who have HIV. For instance, look at the map below. Based on the data displayed in the map, your audience might think that HIV burden is concentrated in large cities like Seattle and Portland, but that might not be true. When you use maps to show counts, the map often just draws your attention to the areas where the population is most dense. That's why it's best to use maps for showing rates and percentages, and not for counts. The map below shows the rate of people who are diagnosed with HIV in the U.S. in 2017 by state. By using a map to show how many people per 100,000 people were diagnosed with HIV in a year, your audience will no longer assume that HIV burden is highest in areas with large urban areas. Rather, they will get a better sense of which areas have a higher rate of people infected with the virus. The final type of visual data display that we will talk about are infographics. Infographics are basically just graphic illustrations that tell a story with data on a particular topic. Infographics are often eye-catching, simple, and contain minimal text. There are many online tools that can be used to create infographics, many of which are free or inexpensive. Some common ones include Canva, Pictochart, then Gage, and Infogram. All of these have free versions that you can use to develop your data presentations. Keep in mind, when you are creating an infographic, like any visual display of data, focus on a few key messages you'd like to communicate Use simple language and don't do a data dump. Rather, only include the most essential and impactful bits of data and make sure to clean up any visual clutter. Practice presenting your data to another person who doesn't know anything about health data and get their feedback before speaking with key decision makers or community members. This will help you learn what information might be confusing to your audience. It will help you make changes to your graphics and language so that you can be clearer and more effective. Also, there are many websites with great information to help you learn more about best practices when it comes to creating your own data visuals and presenting your health data. Some of our favorites here at the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center are Stephanie Evergreen, Anne Emery, and the DataViz Project. They provide services for pay, but also offer quite a few free resources and useful advice. Still got questions about how to present your data? Don't know where to start? Consider connecting with the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center or the Tribal Epi Center that serves your region. Texts are a great resource when it comes to health data. Not only can they help you with obtaining data, collecting your own data, and analyzing and interpreting data, they can also help you translate your data into action through creating strategic plans, developing data-driven policies, and creating effective presentations and reports. To learn more about Tribal Epicenters, visit www.tribalepicenters.org. If you are a member of a tribe in the Pacific Northwest and need data services, contact the Northwest Tribal Epicenter 
at npaihb at npaihb.org. If you are outside of the Pacific Northwest, visit the Tribal Epicenter's website to find contact information for the tech director in your region. Thanks so much for watching this video. To see the next video in this series on correcting for racial misclassification using data linkages, visit the link below. Thanks so much and have a great day.